everybody! We were just looking at some pictures of coral reefs. Hey, Quinn, show them. Okay. I can't believe we have such beautiful rocks under our ocean. They're actually not rocks. They're animals. I'm not talking about fish kings. I'm talking about coral reefs. They're actually animals. Hmm? I think we need to learn about coral reefs. Let's learn about coral reefs! Coral reefs have existed on Earth for around 500 million years, but the reefs we see today were created over the past 5,000 to 10,000 years. And since then, they've been providing shelter and food for many generations of ocean life. Did you know that coral reefs are one of the major marine biomes? And coral reefs are among the most diverse as well as productive biological communities on our entire Earth. Coral reefs are home for thousands and thousands of different species of plants as well as animals. Even though coral reefs cover less than 1% of the ocean floor, they support about one-fourth of all marine species. And not only do they play a vital role in supporting healthy oceans, coral reefs also come in a wide variety of spectacular shapes, sizes, and colors. Coral reefs can be found in all oceans of the world, except the Arctic Ocean. You will find them mostly between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. This is because reef-building corals live in these warmer waters. In fact, the water temperature needs to be about 20 to 28 degrees Celsius or 68 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the best temperature range for proper growth and the health of coral reefs. So what exactly is a coral reef? Well, when you first see a coral reef, you may think they look like plants or even rocks, but corals are actually animals living in a colony. Most coral reefs are made up of thousands of polyps, and these polyps all live together in a small area on the outside of the reef. Think of it like having to share a room with thousands of your brothers and sisters. That's right, Quinn. These coral polyps have to live this way to survive. See, when each of these polyps die, they leave behind a skeletal structure, and these skeletal structures are the building blocks of all coral reefs. And this is where the next generation of polyps will grow and grow the reef for generations of new hard corals. These hard corals are made up of calcium carbonate, most corals rely on something called zooxanthella. Zooxan what? This zooxanthella lives within the tissues of corals. They come in an array of dazzling colors that give coral reefs their spectacular rainbow hues. Corals provide shelter and nutrients that zooxanthella need for photosynthesis. In return, the zooxanthella provides the corals with oxygen and the sugars or carbohydrates needed to live on that, which are produced through the process of photosynthesis. Did you know that there are two main types of corals? Stony corals or hard corals are reef building corals. The hard corals have the hard calcium carbonate skeletons that provide the structure that helps hold coral polyp colonies together, like we mentioned earlier. Then we have soft corals. Soft corals are, you guessed it, soft and bendable. They have a core that is wood-like as well as a fleshy exterior. They often kind of look like trees or plants. Most of the plants that live on the coral reef are various species of seagrass, seaweed, as well as algae. Some other things you may see are different types of grazing fish, such as parrotfish. 
You will also find sea urchins and sponges along with other organisms. Coral grows in warm tropical waters close to the surface. They are usually found near areas that have waves. The ocean waves help to bring food, nutrients, as well as oxygen needed to support the plants and animals that live within the coral reefs. You see, coral also needs the sunlight to grow. This is why they thrive in shallow, warm water. Because of this, you will not usually find a coral reef deeper than 40 to 45 feet deep in the ocean. Coral reefs seem to prefer tropical seas, and this is most likely because the sea water is warmer as well as clearer. And even though coral reefs are well known for the presence of a lot of coral growing together, coral reefs are home to a large, diverse group of life forms other than corals. Some of these include similar looking species like sea anemones, sea fans, sponges, sea squirts, as well as fish, crustaceans, mollusks, and a lot of other species. We will learn more about coral reefs, fish, and species a little later in this video. Would you believe that corals act like a water filter? And these corals increase the water quality in the entire area of the reef. So does the coral reef eat? Well, Quinn, since polyps do need to eat to stay alive, you can think of the coral reef as actually eating. The polyps eat small animals called plankton as well as algae too. Algae gets their food from the sun by using photosynthesis as well. This is yet another reason why coral reefs form close to the surface. At the surface of the water, it is clear, and this is a perfect place where the sun can feed the algae. So where are coral reefs located? Most of the world's coral reefs can be found in Southeast Asia and near Australia. In fact, the largest coral reef in the world is the Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef stretches over 2,600 miles. Now let's talk more about the different types of coral reefs. There are three main types of coral reefs. First, we have a fringe reef. Fringe reefs grow close to the shoreline. Fringe reefs can also be attached to the shore, or there can be a thin strip of water called a lagoon or channel between the land and the coral reef. Next, we have the barrier reef. Barrier reefs grow further away from the shoreline. Sometimes barrier reefs can be as far as several miles from the shoreline. Last, we have an atoll. An atoll is a circle of coral that surrounds a lagoon of water. It begins as a fringe reef located around a volcanic island. As the coral continues to age and grow, the island sinks into the ocean and just the ring of coral is left. In fact, some atolls are so large that people can live on them. An example of this is the beautiful islands of the Maldives. Have you ever seen a piece of coral that is white? This is called coral bleaching. And coral bleaching is a process in which corals, as well as sea anemones, lose their zooxanthella, and this causes them to lose their color. Bleaching is actually a stress response, which can happen because of temperature changes. Coral bleaching is not always fatal. However, it can lead to disease and then death. It is estimated around 60% of the world's reefs are at risk. And in Southeast Asia, 80% of reefs are considered endangered. Fortunately, there are things we can do to help reduce the impacts we have on corals, as well as the marine life that depends on them. 
So if you learned something about coral reefs in this video and want to help, then now is the time to become part of the movement to protect these vital ecosystems. You can do this by telling more people how important these reefs are to our oceans and our planet. Hey, did you like this video? Hey, did you learn something new? Then don't forget to sub and smash that like button. And, and we'll, we'll see you on the next Hey, Guess What? Boom!